Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop. In this video, I'll be answering a reader question and making this banner. And I'll be doing it all in vector shapes, so it's completely scalable. Let's jump into Photoshop and see how it's done. Okay, here I am, we're all ready to go. And like I say, we're gonna create this completely in vectors, so it's all scalable. Let's go and get our first shape, which is the rectangle. And I'm going to draw out our first shape, which is going to be sort of the back left hand side of this banner. There we go. And I'm going to call this one flag because it looks a bit like a flag, I suppose. But as long as I know what it is. Now I'm going to make a copy of this. I'm going to go to layer and duplicate layer. And I'm going to call this one main and click OK. I'm going to hide the visibility of that and go back to the flag layer. I'd like to alter the shape of this just a little bit. So I just need to go and select this. So I'm going to go onto the black arrow tool and click on the shape, just so I get the path. Then I'm going to go get the pen tool. Now don't panic here. We're not going to be using the pen tool very much. I just need it just to put a point in the middle of that line. There we go. Now let's go and get the white arrow tool, which is the direct selection, and just make sure that just that new point is the one that's selected. I can click on it and pull it in. And I can also make sure that it's more centralized. And there we go. Now I've got this rounded bit. I can leave it like that if I wish, but if I wanted it to be points, I'll go back underneath the pen tool here and use the convert point tool. I just click on the new point. There we are. Now let's uh, make this a bit more shaded. Clicking on any shape tool again will bring up my fill and stroke. And I'm going to click on fill and I'm going to use a gradient. Now, the great thing about using gradients here is that they will adapt with the size of the vector shape. So we don't have to worry about these once they're in place. I'm going to change the angle here to uh, 180. There we go. Or oh, nearly 180 degrees. There we go. And so it's running from right to left. Let's double click on the swatch here just so I can choose a different color and I'm going to choose a red so five for my hue saturation of 100 and then I want this to be a darker red so I'm going to bring my brightness to around about 70 percent and click OK. Let's click on the other swatch here double click there and repeat that but this time five 100 and 100 so then we go from dark to light red and click OK and then we're done with that one that was easy enough now let's create a new shape. Let's go over to our shapes and this time we're going to choose polygon tool. And you'll notice at the top here, I've chosen to have it three sided. So a triangle. And if I click on the cog, absolutely nothing is selected here at all. So we're going to have a perfect triangle. So what I'm going to do is just click down and start dragging. And you'll notice that it's difficult to get the angle spot on here. So we need to put in the shift key. So I press shift and now it's constrained. If I bring my mouse over to the left, that's the shape we want and it is dead straight, but not in the right place. So I've still got my mouse pressed down. I've got shift down and now I'm going to press space bar as well. And that means that I can move it into place. Now, depending on how you want your banner to be, you can either line this up with the top or the bottom. I'm going to line it up with the top for this one. And I'm going to get it just about there to the size I want and then let go of space, let go of the mouse button, and then let go of shift. And I haven't got that spot on at all, have I? Let's go and get the move tool. I've got snap on, so it should snap to the edges here. I may want to just zoom in to see how well I'm doing. There we go. There we are, that's good. And I can nudge it should I need with the arrow keys. I'm not too happy about the color here. So let's go back into the swatches here. And I'm going to again choose to do a gradient. This time I'm going to sort of do a yellow. So let's go to the yellow this time. Double click. And the hue wants to be 60. And saturation 100, brightness 70. And click OK. And then do the bright color, which is 60, 100, 100. And there we go. And the angle's not quite right here either. Let's switch this run around just a little bit. Sort of that way-ish will be good. Let's bring that around just a little bit more. We can always finesse this a little bit later as well. So you notice that a line with layer is on and we're doing this as a linear as well. Okay, I'm happy with that, reasonably so. Let's see uh, how we get on with the rest of it. Let's close that down. Okay, 
Now I need that main layer and bring on the visibility of that. Now again, I've got snap on, which is really gonna help me here, because I'm gonna move this one into place and I want it to snap with where the fold there of that triangle is, and it's just about there. Now I can also see that I'm about a pixel or two out with my fold here. So let's go back to polygon one. I'm gonna call this one fold actually, just so we know where we're at. So fold, and then I'm on my move tool, I can just press my right arrow key there, just the once, that's all it needed. And now let's get main and shift that across as well. And there we go. Good, I'm gonna zoom out. Now I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger just to help me work with it, but it doesn't matter at the moment. It's totally scalable, remember? But I'm gonna go and get my white arrow tool again, or the direct selection tool, and just select the two points at this end and drag them out. There we go. If I want to, I can press shift as well, just to make sure it goes in a straight line. Let's change the color of this one. And I'm gonna use those reds again in the gradient. Perhaps I should have saved the gradient. That would have been helpful. But let's double click and go five and 100 and then 80. And then on the other end, we want to go five, 100 and 100 and click okay. This time I'm going to choose a radial gradient and it's the wrong way around, but that's okay. We can use this icon here just to swap them over. There we go. And I can scale this up now just so it adds a bit of a shine to it. There we are. And close that down. And now all our pieces have been created. We just need to copy those little bits on the left hand side, fold and flag, and put them on the right hand side. So let's click on fold and control or command and click on flag and then go up to layer and duplicate layers. We don't need to do anything here. Click OK. And then go to edit, transform path and flip horizontal. Now if I get my move tool, I can just move those across. Again, they should snap into place. I can use shift to make sure they go in a straight line. And if they don't get quite right, we can just use the arrow keys to get that done. Here we go, there we are. Good. And the only problem here is that with flag copy, which is the back on the right hand side, the gradient's now going in the wrong direction. So let's select that layer, click on any of the shape tools, and then up into the gradient. And again, we can just flop this over. There we go, and we're done. So now let's click on main, and then shift and click on flag and that will select them all together. Then we can go up to layer, smart objects, convert to a smart object. And they're all together. So they're vectors and they're in a smart object and that's why they're all scalable. And the gradients will stay in relation to the size of the shape. So we can start transforming that around as much as we like. There we go, click the tick and it will stay pin sharp. And let's go back down again. There we go. Let's add some text. So just click on the text tool and then I'm gonna write tutorial. Tutorial. And I'm gonna change the color of that. I'm gonna pick out one of these yellows actually. There we go, somewhere in the mid range. And move that up onto my banner. Good. That wasn't a bad guess but I'm gonna make the banner just a little bit bigger. Control or Command T, and then I'm gonna hold down the Alt key while I drag this out so it goes from the middle. There we go. Nudge this up a bit, just so tutorial appears in the middle of the banner. There we are, and click the tick. As easy as that. Now what I need to do is click on the text, Control or Command click on the banner, which is called main now, and then this time I'm gonna right click and choose convert to a smart object. And now it's all vector and it's in a smart object with the text, which means I can control a command T, then right click in there and choose warp. From here, I can come up to this drop down menu and choose arc. That's a bit too much for me. I'm gonna bring the bend down so I can click on the word bend and move my mouse to the left hand side and it'll make the bend much smaller. Actually, I want it the other way. So I'm gonna double click on the figures here and put minus 13. There we are. And click the tick. So there we are. 
I'm going to add this to a logo that I created in a previous video, but you can add it to whatever you like, of course. I'm Eric Reno. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and visit us at tipsquirrel.com for a whole host of other Photoshop goodness. Until next time, bye-bye for now.